now we have an, uh, a, a PARP inhibitor two years later, December 19, 2016, uh, called Recaparib. Uh, again, accelerated approval, uh, 106 patients, 54% um, response rate, 9.2 month duration, duration of response. So what, what people do is they'll say, well, Olaparib is, is, is 34, Recaparib is 54, Recaparib must be better. <laughs> is that is that a, is that a, is that a, no? Well, obviously, there's some patients on the elaborate probably that had 14 prior lines of therapy. Yeah. So it's a different well, patient population. And I think you can't compare that. I think what what the Ariel two study did is because they really looked at PARP activity in all platinum sensitive patients, and that included actually the entire Ariel two study with 500 patients included patients that had. Um, so Ariel two is the phase two of recovery. Phase two set of recovery. And they included BRCA mutated care, uh, patients, be it somatic or germline. They included patients with one prior line of therapy, two prior lines, three prior lines of therapy, platinum sensitive, platinum resistant. So it, it clearly shows the response rate was inversely correlated with the number of lines of therapy. You so the more us. lines you had, you the higher, higher <laughs> yeah. the response rate, but also. So you can't do cross-study comparisons. Let's you can't it. say Olaparib had a 30% and versus a 50 or an 80%. Exactly. It, it depends on the number of prior lines and it depends on the platinum sensitivity status. So uh, here's what you taught the world. Yeah. The predictors of PARP sensitivity are the molecular signature you told us, BRCA, LOH, okay? Molecular signature. Platinum sensitivity. Yes. The better the platinum response, the better the response. And the, the number of lines of therapy. Matt says, well, number of lines of therapy. Yeah. So those three things, yeah. molecular signature, platinum sensitive, number of lines of therapy, predict activity. Yeah. yeah that's a good take home message. So, and I would say that the other really kind of other key points are there. So one is that it validated, Aerial 2 validated this non-BRCA HRD signature. Okay, so that's the one thing. And the other was is that we hadn't had much data on germline versus somatic. Mm -hmm. But in Aerial 2, we were able to show, and now also with in Nova, that the somatic uh, uh, alterations are the same, or see, it seemed to perform the same as so the germline. So the Recaprib label includes not only germline, like Olaprib, yes. mm -hmm. but germline and somatic. And Olaprib is three prior regimens. Recaprib is now two prior legimens. So with the Recaprib approval, we got a line earlier, mm -hmm. and we got somatic. In product. So tell us what the toxicities are, Matt, of Recaprib. So Recaprib has you know, similar toxicities as uh, Katie mentioned with Olaprib. Um, perhaps slight differences, but I, you know, again, different patient populations, more heavily pretreated. Um, you're still going to have the nausea. You're still going to have issues with uh, anemia, fatigue. You know, I think the nausea, the, the take-home message, and again, it was borne out in the trial that looked at the twist, the nausea happens early, and usually the patients do well later. It's the fatigue that tends to get us later, the anemia. So dose reductions and dose delays are very important for these patients. Yes. Thank you for that. So to summarize those two, Olaparib or Caprib toxicities. I think there's some so differences, there's a couple, there's a couple, there's a couple I'll get to that, but right. I want to summarize. We're like, GI, <laughs> G, GI yeah. nausea, Classic diarrhea, toxic. dyspepsia, mm -hmm. two bone marrow, talked about some platelets yeah. and anemia, and three is the fatigue. But aren't, aren't you surprised when you do these trials and you read the papers that at average between 40 and 60 percent of the patients on every trial with a PARP inhibitor ended up with a dose reduction? That's what he said. Yeah, that's I mean, right. Are we doing, did we start out too high? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, but these uh, are fixed oral doses. Right. Yeah. So, so when, you, when, when you have all different yeah. sizes and shapes of patients yeah. mm -hmm. and you give them all the same dose, some it's not going to be right. right. I mean, I guess we could do a, dig, a digoxin-like level, mm -hmm. right? Give them a dose and do their level, mm -hmm. but it's 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 more practical just to monitor them closely, like you just said, and when appropriate, do a dose delay, dose. let them get better. And despite a dose reduction, you still see the demonstrated yes. efficacy. It's you're not compromising the activity. That's right. And, you and stay think, on the drug, but you got to. And we learned that a long yeah. long ago, right? When yeah. we were doing a lap of 100 versus yeah. 400, we saw that there's yeah. a broad therapeutic window. So we have we have room to mm -hmm. tweak it yes. to the patient, personalize yeah. it. Thank you for that. All right, and then the next study to come out of Recaparib is Ariel 3. So you talked to us about Ariel 2, which is a phase 2, and that helped inform the label. Now, Ariel 3 mm -hmm. is a, tell phase, us, Rob, well, phase, the PI. Yeah, so, so again, phase 3 that looks very much like these others. Um, it's a, a, a study that uh, is looking at uh, platinum sensitive, uh, or plat patients responding to a platinum with a partial or complete response, and then they're randomized to placebo uh, or uh, the recaprib. And, and so. It's a platinum sensitive maintenance drug. Correct. 
just like uh, the NOVA trial, just like SOLO2, with the exception of a broader patient population. And so um, the, the, an the analytical plan, is, is we, and we can maybe talk about this a bit, but essentially what it's doing is it's looking at the germline patients, the HRD patients, and the broader population, and, and in, in a way to help us to understand how these, how these drugs work in all of those situations. I yeah. think, I think the development is also that they're prospectively validating this assay of HRD, yeah. which, um, and they're already in the negotiation. Non -germline, in the non-germline. In the non-germline, and they're also in negotiation with the FDA. So at the end, maybe there will be a companion diagnostic that you can test this HRD right. and it will be approved, as opposed to the um, uh, Niraprip data where you do have a, a HRD assay, but it's not an official companion diagnostic right. and it's not tied to the HRD status. And Ariel, I think, three will be very informative regarding For that, that exactly. prospectively and evaluated. And, and as I mentioned before, in Ariel yeah. two, we did see that it was a discriminator yeah. you know, if, uh, between those potential patient populations.